Imagine a 3D printer that can print anything you want, okay? Tough car parts, soft rubber, clear lenses, surgical equipment, why not? Fake teeth, even ceramics. Now imagine it also fixes everything you think is annoying about resin printing. The smells, the spills, the failures, the complication, the hours spent screwing with settings. This insane printer is the Form 4B. It has industrial capabilities and it has an industrial price to match. But even if you don't buy one, and at this price, I suspect you won't, this thing will probably change the way 3D printing is used forever. And here's the thing, as capable as it is, the printer itself is not the most impressive part, but you will need the printer to take advantage of that. So before I spill the secret, let's look at the machine. And quick note, the Form 4B, this thing, is basically the Form 4's twin. It works the same, but if you want to print like the, the surgical dental stuff, uh, you're gonna need the 4B. Okay, with that out of the way, how does this thing fix all the things we hate about 3D printing? First up, speed. I really doubt they can make this thing go any faster. There's a bunch of time, like in a 3D print, that doesn't really do the printing, right? The plate's moving and all that. And all that stuff on this is really fast. The plate moves up and down faster than anything I've ever seen. It's got this mixer that moves back and forth. That goes so fast, it doesn't get in the way. And it's got this like textured display that cures like the, the suction problem of the release film suctioning down. I think it's basically as fast as they can make it without sacrificing quality. And if you're producing things to sell or you're like rapidly prototyping or you're just really impatient, that's gonna be really important. They say most prints in under two hours. My fastest print was 38 minutes, but most things I print, I generally like max out the size of every machine I try. So my prints on average were probably about four hours, but I wasn't using the fast resin. They have a faster resin. If you use the fast resin, you can get a full height, full build area print in under two hours. So they're right there. I think generally like layer height being consistent, it isn't any faster than other consumer printers out there, like the current consumer fast printers. It isn't any slower either. But that speed means absolutely nothing without the next point. I absolutely hate print failures. Uh, it's wasted time, it's wasted materials. I've had plenty of fast printers where I had to print something three or four times in a row just to get one. And it's not that fast if you have to do it four times. As a result, in my own projects, I generally don't care how fast the machine is as long as it's reliable. My longest ever print, not on this machine, was 76 hours. Can you imagine if it got 65 hours in and then failed? Yeah, reliability is important. Formlabs publishes a, a failure rate on their website of 1.3%, and I'm shocked it's that high. I suspect it was better. I only had one print that didn't work perfectly, and it was this. This is a little, this is like a, a keychain whistle, and it said Biomed Durable. Why did I use Biomed Durable to print a whistle? Because it goes in my mouth. This only has one area that failed. The whole thing didn't fail. I suspect I could try again with a different orientation. It'd probably fix that issue. Uh, but every every other whistle or flute that I printed came out fine. Like this one. Man, that's loud. And yeah, durable, because it goes on a keychain, because it's going to take a beating. You know, and I don't want it to break. Also, this nifty recorder, which I had to print in pieces. And some other ones, too. I'm not a woodwind player, all right? I'm a string player. Give me a break. Okay, fast and reliable. Got it. But why would you want a printer stinking up the place? Resins usually smell awful. The processing chemicals can be even worse. I get lightheaded sometimes and I get these like pains in my neck, which are really weird when I'm out. Even this is in a garage with like ventilation. But for some reason, like the five Formlabs resins I've tried, uh, they don't smell bad. If anything, the Clear V5, this one that the hand is made out of, smells kind of good. Formlabs claims the resins are ACMO free. I, I can't pronounce what that stands for, but it makes cheap resins smell terrible and require a lot of ventilation. Speeds of exposure times, but also kind of poisonous. Formlabs doesn't have that, so it won't stink up your office. You know, if this is in like an office and not a ventilated garage. I don't know how the Form 4 does it, but it doesn't seem to be slowed down by it. I suspect it's some witchcraft with their fancy lighting setup. I'm not gonna go into technical details because it doesn't matter and I don't understand them. All I know is I don't get lightheaded and I don't start sneezing, and I don't get all itchy if I spill any on my skin. Still use nitrile gloves, obviously, but the lack of fumes still isn't the best part. Then there's the wash station. This thing back here. You can wash an entire plate, or you can pop the things off the plate and into a basket. The thing auto raises and lowers itself, which is super fun to watch. And that means if you like hit go and you walk away, when it's done, it will lift everything out and let it drip dry. You won't accidentally leave anything down in the cleaning alcohol for days like I've done once a month for the last three years. 
It's pretty cool, and when the bucket lifts out, there's a little flap that closes off the alcohol tank, so that won't evaporate up and stink up the joint. It probably doesn't matter as much with these resins that don't smell really bad, but if you're working in a shared space, like a maker space, or an office or something, someone's not gonna wanna smell alcohol fumes, right? Also, Formlabs makes a washing solution that I can personally attest does not smell, which is kinda neat, but smell or no, Post-processing is still like, it's still kind of a hassle, right? Not always. Some of their resins actually don't require post-curing. You can just print it, clean it, and you're done. Post-curing can improve certain characteristics like strength or rigidity or something, but sometimes it's not necessary. And that whole thing can really speed up the process, especially if you're trying to like iterate or pump out a lot of something. And since we're talking about curing, uh, let's talk about the cure station, because this is where it goes off the rails a little bit. I'm not saying it's bad. It's pretty good. It has multiple profiles for resins built in, which is really handy, um, but it takes forever to heat up and it's actually not that big. I'm always like pushing the limits of the size of things I can print. Biggest thing I've ever printed, by the way, six and a half feet long, obviously not on a resin printer. But if I print anything on this that fills the cure station, even the parts of this or this clear metal filled hand that you'll see in a future video, this could print on the form four. It could not fit in the form cure. Man, that thing's heavy. That seems like an oversight. That's what I would be saying if they didn't just release a new cure station that was bigger and heats much faster. I'm sure this new one's awesome. Get the new one, the Form Cure V2. This old version is probably better matched with the Form 3 printer, which is smaller. But if you print something maximum size in a Form 4, it will fit in the Cure V2. So disregard my complaints. Okay, so that's fine and good. Uh, but anyone who knows resin printing knows the prints warp to high heaven and parts don't like fitting together. Form Labs claims their parts rival injection molding in accuracy. And that's the important thing. I've tried other printers that claim to warp less, and they do, significantly less, but they still warp kinda. I still gotta break out the files and the sandpaper. These parts don't seem to warp quite as bad. That's not to say they're flawless. You can tell they're 3D printed if you really know what to look for, but they're better than any of the other ones I've tried. Obviously, I haven't made a complex machinery with it, but this, uh, the file for this, the files, this, this is in four pieces. They're, the files are basically zero clearance, which is a standard 3D modeling noob problem. I tried printing this in Sunlu resin on another printer. I, I couldn't get the pieces together. I did not alter the files. I put them on here and they fit. They're tight. They're pretty tight, but I was able to shove them together without a hammer or, or sandpaper or anything. So zero clearance is zero clearance, but it isn't more or less than zero clearance. Okay, system is great, but how easy is it to use? Uh, let's say you're in a makerspace or in a group of wherever engineers do their thing. You're gonna need a machine that's able to be understood and used by everyone without uh, spending six years obsessed with 3D printing like me. Good news, this is pretty easy to learn. So they say you can learn in 15 minutes. They have a bunch of videos on the website, which are very useful. Uh, but I would say if you're particularly tech savvy, if someone shows you what to do within five minutes and maybe gives you a sheet of paper as a cheat sheet, you can figure out the rest. That's how easy it is. If you've done a bunch of 3D printing, you don't even need to look at the instructions. In my opinion, the software called Preform is so self-explanatory, you'll just be able to use it. Just like the process of like unlatching everything and moving and washing, and it's, it's very easy to learn. In my experience, it slices and transmits stuff faster than Chitubox and Lychee, and it's a little faster than, than Blueprint, but if you're putting in goofy files, the Form Labs program does a lot better job of slicing it. If you don't know what any of those words mean, good news, you don't have to. So this is designed for people who like printing stuff, not people who like messing with printers. You can use the program to monitor the print ongoing, you can check the, the resin, how much resin you have, how much life is left in the vat, everything like that. Uh, there's even a bunch of fleet monitoring stuff and statistics, which are probably more useful for like companies doing stuff and not just a dude in his garage. And as cool as the software is, uh, it's still not the best part. As a side note, when you're done printing and cleaning and curing and everything, sometimes you need post-processing, right? Like cleanup. Formlabs has a, a finishing tools kit that gives you everything you need there. Rotary tool, pen sander, clippers, a mat, everything. You could literally start with no equipment, buy the big package from Formlabs, and they will send you everything you need start to finish. In many ways, this is a very difficult printer to review. The market is flooded with like inexpensive consumer products meant to print uh, miniatures, mostly gaming miniatures. But this is an expensive machine designed for industry. Like it's meant to work for a living. And there's really no competition in that market as far as I can tell. So what do I compare it to? Like I've been testing another consumer resin printer at the same time, side by side, and the difference is insane. 
This one, it's simple, it's clean, everything just works. I haven't had to tune or adjust anything. It is, it is just click and go truly. The other one's not a bad printer, especially if you're printing minis. I suspect most of you will buy that one because it's a fraction of the price. But comparing the two is a bit like comparing a Silverado with a Honda Ruckus. You know, both will get you to work just fine, but one is far cheaper and you can tell. That's no shade on the Honda Ruckus. It's a great scooter, but if you want to pick up like two yards of mulch, or your work is as a mobile welder, you kind of need the truck, right? And that's the point here. I suspect most people watching resin printer content are printing miniatures. Consumer printers and resins are almost pathologically fixated on that market. Not saying it's a bad thing. I personally have many thousands of points of printed one-page rules miniatures and terrain and even some, some bigiatures, really large ones. But using the Form 4 to print miniatures is a bit like buying a Super Duty pickup and just using it to commute to the office, which is what most pickups are used for. Why am I using this metaphor? Anyways, Greedy3D made a video about using a Form 4 to print models like miniature painting models. If you're interested in that application, go watch this video, I'll put a link in the description. To sum it up, it prints minis with, with surface detail, just as good as several other printers that claim to have much better resolution. He's got other conclusions too, and I agree with everything he said 100%, but miniature printing isn't what makes this printer special. So if it's not the hardware, which is awesome, and if it's not the print quality, which is also awesome, or the software, or the excellent consumer support, which I haven't even mentioned, or the ergonomics of the whole setup, what is it about this printer that will change the way 3D printing is used forever? It's actually the resin library. Yeah, most resins out there are really for like models and cosplay miniatures. They're focused on really good detail and speed and they're kind of brittle, even a lot of the tough ones. Formlabs resins, the standard resins, will print miniatures with excellent detail. I have some over here somewhere, but they have resins that can do so much more. They have like tough, slightly flexible resins, rigid glass fiber reinforced resins, flexible TPU-like resins, even straight up printed silicone. If you want to make metal things, you got wax, burnout, investment casting resins, even clear casts, which I have right here. This is for investment casting resins, not small jewelry things, but like large, thick ones, and you can print it hollow. I don't think there's another investment casting resin out there that can do this. Investment casting, by the way, is a whole ordeal, and it's not going to be covered in this video, but you can bet it will be soon. Every week, it seems like someone posts a new creative use for one of these resins, like steel forming dyes, injection molds, clear optics, uh, low friction gear trains, carbon fiber layup, small rocket nozzle prototyping. That was pretty interesting to watch. Speaking of unique applications, you can print ceramic with this. Here's an alumina resin. And after like a complicated process of like burnout and sintering and stuff, you can actually have a high temperature ceramic. Yeah, printed alumina. How crazy is that? Here's a printed sand casting filter. Filters are something I've been trying to find for like home sand casters to buy. I can't find a source for it. If you can find one, let me know, but you could print one on this. Then there's biocompatibility. That's, you're gonna need the Form 4B for that. A lot of the resins also have a biocompatible version with some differences. This Biomed Durable resin, for example, it's rated for long-term skin contact over 30 days, long-term mucosal membrane contact is more than 30 hours, greater than 30 hours, and short-term tissue dentin and bone contact. So yeah, this could be stuck inside a guy for up to 24 hours. Probably not a great idea to do that, but you can print surgical tools with stuff and it's fully sterilizable. They can take an MRI or a scan or something of your bones and then print out a bracket that can hold your bones, specifically your bones together with drill holes to help a surgeon who's putting your arm back together on this. And since it's straight 3D printing, it's not like you're waiting weeks to get a mold made. You can just print the thing out in a couple hours. And then there's obviously like everything a dentist would need for like molds for thermal forming, like those clear Invisalign deals or like trays or even like teeth and dentures and stuff. Did I mention it's all on just this one printer can do all of that? So that's like tons of applications already. But I think these examples so far just use 3D printing to do something that could be accomplished in other ways already. And I think they're hardly scratching the surface. I made a master list for myself of all the different resins and all the different applications I could think of. It's constantly growing. Do you really think premium teeth resin is only good for teeth? Really? My whole point of this channel is to push the limits of what can be done with 3D printing. And I think this machine and the resin library is the tool for the job. And you're not limited to existing resins. Let's say you want to use this. This is Monocure Thermocast. It's a direct metal casting resin up to about a thousand degrees. This machine has an open material mode that you can buy and you can use anything you want in it. I haven't tested that out 
uh, but maybe I will at some point in the future. That would be cool. The existing resins though are excellent and their library keeps expanding and improving. In the three weeks that I've been messing with this printer, they already released an updated Tough 1500 resin, which is much tougher. They, they showed it on a, on a stream, the dude stood on it, they even threw it in a blender. That was fun to watch. Point is, if you're printing model and miniatures, this is great. But unless you're mass producing them, this probably isn't your machine. If you're doing anything else beyond that, take a look at the Formlab stuff. It might even be your only option. Fortunately, it's a really good option. In fact, in the three weeks I've had this stuff, I have found one thing and only one thing to complain about this printer. It's not very big. Half the projects I want to print, I had to like scale down or adjust or something to fit in the build area. It's a little smaller than like a Saturn IV build area. For most people, that's big enough. Like for a dentist, way more than big enough. And this is way bigger and faster than the previous one, the Form 3, which I never tried. But you're not really out of luck there because Form Labs does sell a bigger version of this, the 4L or 4LB, which I think is bigger than a GK3 Ultra. And I gotta say, if I win the lottery this weekend, that will be my first tool purchase is a 4LB. I should buy a lottery ticket. If this sounds like an advertisement, fear not. I am not supposed to sell any of these. There is no affiliate program. If you click on a link below, go to their website and buy $10 million worth of their equipment, I won't see a dime. I just think these are that cool. And if you're interested in seeing me set this thing up, so we're talking cutting the tape on the box all the way to finished print, uh, I recorded all of that and there'll be a link on the screen now. See you there.